Hi there, and welcome to Excuse the Beard. And today I want to talk about the fact that if you have stepped into an automotive showroom in India recently and tried to order a car and then felt very shocked that you are told to wait for six months, as much as six months, for what you think is a fairly normal, ordinary car. You might have been told that if you buy a Kia Sonnet, you have to wait for three months. Or even this Hyundai Alcazar I'm driving, you have to wait for a couple of months. But the factories are running. I mean, demand is not that high up. Why do I have to wait? Why is the wait list all that much? I mean, car sales are not, they're not down, but there's no logical reason for you to wait for three, four, five, six months for a vehicle. Well, actually, there is a logical reason. That logical reason is that there is a semiconductor shortage in the world. Why does it affect you? It's a car, it's got an engine and, you know, it where are the semiconductors? Well, this Hyundai Alcazar I'm driving. I've just given the left side indicator to take a left turn and I've got a little screen over here that shows me the view from my outside rear view mirror. That rear view mirror has a semiconductor. This is the digital display, it has a semiconductor. This is uh, my infotainment system, which is running Apple CarPlay, while my iPhone over here has the semiconductor, so does this. So does the air conditioning, so does my power window controls over here, so does the sunroof over here, so does the wireless charger over here. Everything has a semiconductor now. There are hundreds, hundreds of semiconductors all over the car. I mean, um, think about it. I've got tire pressure monitors in this car. You have tire pressure monitors even on a fairly uh, ordinary small hatchback nowadays. Those have semiconductors. And when the March 2020 hit and we got coronavirus and factories shut down and people didn't know and people saw the economy going to save, they thought that global automotive demand would take years, not they, they, I mean the automotive industry thought that you know demand will take a long time to come back so they paired back orders for semiconductors now you have to understand one thing about the automotive industry you see the automotive industry does not order semiconductors directly from the guys who protect uh, you know produce them you know taiwan semiconductor uh, or people like that they actually buy a finished part like this entire central console on the Alcazar comes finished by a tier one supplier which could be Bosch it could be uh, uh, Magneti Morelli it could be one of those large tier one suppliers the guy who's making the semiconductor no matter how big they are it could be Samsung it could be anybody it could be ARM Nvidia whoever it is they are possibly a tier three or tier four supplier to the automotive company, whether it's Hyundai, whether it's Suzuki, whether it's even Mercedes-Benz. Yes, some critical processes, some critical functions, they might buy the semiconductor directly, but very often the semiconductor is, you know, not the top priority for the automotive, because the automotive industry now works on assembling a product. A car company, pretty much, whether, again, all these car companies, they are just assembling a bunch of parts together uh, to make a finished product. They are not making those parts. So, yes, they do make the body shell of the car uh, at the factory. If you've ever been to a car plant, the uh, body shell is stamped out. and uh, So a Hyundai or a Maruti would make that. But they are not making this entire central console. I mean, Hyundai has not made a central console in, a, in years. I mean, in decades, possibly. They're buying it all pre-assembled to their specifications from a tier one supplier. So when the coronavirus hit and lockdown happened, they cut back their orders. At the same time as the lockdown happened, people realized that work from home meant they needed to buy new laptops or new iPads or you know, you had two laptops in the house, but suddenly your children also need to use the laptops to study or the tablet to study or a smartphone to study. Uh, you need to buy a second TV. Oh, she didn't have a washing machine. You need to buy a new washing machine. You need a new microwave. All of those products use microprocessors. 
So a lot of the demand went to consumer durables and consumer products and um, there were just not enough chipsets left when um, you know we started going back the lockdown started lifting you know before the second wave and even after the second wave has subsided demand has gone up for cars and they're just not in enough microprocessors I mean not all the microprocessors in the car are as advanced as the one behind this infotainment screen or this digital display uh, microprocessors for a power window or the tire pressure monitor those are you know those cost five ten rupees max then they're not expensive microprocessors um, you know they're made in the millions but a car company buys millions of them and you're producing a million cars a year if you have tire pressure monitors you need four million of those microprocessors um, and when you consider tens of millions of cars are sold you need that many into four and those are the similar microprocessors that say a microwave might use for its timer or uh, similarly a washing machine or something like that and they're just not enough of them and that's a problem and while the manufacturers can scale up a fabrication plant for chips even not very expensive chips takes time and it's not as if it's shortage of just these uh, inexpensive small chipsets. There's also a shortage of these very expensive chipsets that you need for things like this. I mean, just using the indicator button and seeing this camera. I mean, outside we have mirrors didn't have cameras before. So there is a shortage. And that shortage is going to mean that uh, cars will take a long time to produce. And the fact of the matter is, you can say, I want a basic car. I want... Um, Maruti Alto or uh, Maruti Celerio. I don't need to have a fancy infotainment screen or tire pressure sensors. I mean, why should I wait for those things? I don't even need a infotainment display. Well, the fact of the matter is, with new emission norms and new um, car norms, and and if you want to have these super lean burning engines, uh, everything is controlled by microprocessors, even on two wheelers. You know, to, just to meet Bharat State 6 norms, many uh, two-wheelers are today fuel-injected. And fuel injection means there is a microprocessor in the engine controlling the spray, controlling the timing. It's not a carburetor or a chain-driven system anymore. Everything is electronically controlled. If Hero sells one million motorcycles a month, they need, you know, two, three, four million um, microprocessors to do that so it's not just the automotive and not just the passenger car and the passenger vehicle industry that is affected by the microprocessor shortage it is also the two-wheeler industry and all these electric uh, cars and bikes you see they use even more microprocessors they need you know double triple the number of microprocessors an internal combustion engine car like this needs because the power control unit on a uh, car like even you know the Hyundai Kona has twice the number of semiconductors the Salkazar would have it's you a car is a running computer it's, it's a multitude of computers uh, it's not you know I don't want to say that a car has more processing power than what took us to the moon what took us to the moon was a very different sort of computer but a car of 2021 compared to a car of say even 2001 you've gone up uh, wow about thousand times in processing power those days you had a carburetor that was all mechanical it was mechanically linked my accelerator was mechanically linked to the engine everything now is running it's drive by wire whether you realize it or not uh, which is why your roadside mechanic cannot fix a modern car anymore which is a sad thing I guess that's the price you pay for uh, living in today's world and well the microprocessor is the price we pay I do believe things will be very uh, much better by 2022 as more semiconductor plants set up in Taiwan in China Japan Korea hopefully even India and um, that should ease up and all the processing uh, power shortages that we have will also sort themselves out in the next few months but um, yeah 
if you walk into a showroom today and are told to wait for three, four, five, six months, don't just blame the manufacturer. Please understand that, uh, well, you do blame the manufacturer because they didn't anticipate demand. Uh, but uh, do understand it's not just their fault for this. Thanks for watching. Do like and do subscribe to these videos. I really enjoy making them for you. And uh, do leave your comments below. Thanks a ton.